Souls likes have been a genre that I've been a big fan of over the last few years, having recently gone through a marathon of sorts by replaying the FromSoft games in order, as well as playing other Souls likes not made by FromSoft, such as the Remnant series and Dead Cells. Seeing that I was itching for more, I stumbled upon a game that has mostly positive reviews and only has 2,752 reviews as of recording this video. And that's Steel Rising, a game developed by AA Game Studio, Spiders, who are known for their pretty good but also clunky and janky games, most notably Greedfall. This is my first time playing a Spiders game, so you won't hear any bias or anything about critiquing their games as a whole, just my opinion on this game alone. I was pleasantly surprised with my experience on Steel Rising and I'd like to talk about this game in more detail. If you enjoy the video, like and subscribe and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's get into it, shall we? Steel Rising puts you in the shoes of the Queen's bodyguard, Aegis, an automaton masterpiece, who's sent into the city of Paris to investigate and find out what happened to her missing children, as well as the King, who's undergone some sort of madness as the automatons have been tearing the city apart killing anything that stands in their way. The story revolves around Aegis finding and rescuing key figures of the Paris or French monarch, bringing them together and learning more about Aegis' origins, which is very vague at first. I actually found the story to be quite interesting at times, as seeing dialogue choices and character conversations in a game like this is something that's usually either convoluted or left out for interpretation, with gameplay being the main focus. I have to give props to Spiders for trying to create something interesting, even if it does fall short at times and leaves you clueless or not wanting to care. During the game, you find these echoes that let you peep into the memories of said characters and that help to flesh out the lore a bit. It's also worth noting that the facial animations and lip syncing is not that good, with lips trying to stick with the script or to the script and facial expressions being pretty bad. This is one of many examples of the spider's jank, and it shows, man. I think if they topped it up a bit more, it could have had a better impact in some places. The voice acting was pretty good, mixing a bit of French with English. I kind of enjoyed hearing the French accents every now and then. Rescuing these characters also meant that you'd get side quests and more content, which adds a few extra hours on top of the main story, which is a nice touch. A decent story at best, not bad, but not good. Steel Rising basically retains the Souls-like formula that you all know and love, but with some innovations. For starters, the combat is pretty solid, with special weapon attacks that change the way you play, such as a counter-attack which serves as a parry, a spinning attack which lets you spin around and deal massive amounts of damage, which is what you're seeing here with one of my main weapons, the Falcon and Saber, and blade strikes which let you perform quick slice and dice attacks. Weapon variety is pretty solid here, each weapon having affinities that scale with three main stats, power, agility, and alchemy. What you want to go for can be decided from the game's character creator, which isn't deep by any means, but lets you pick from a choice of faces, your skin color, and colors of your outfit, followed by choosing from one of four classes. Bodyguard is your hard-hitting class, letting you smash enemies with a hammer while also gaining extra health and defense or balance as a caller to start off with. Soldier is your basic knight class, a jack of all trades and all about dealing physical damage and wielding powerful weapons, gaining extra physical damage and more endurance or stamina. Dancer, which is a class I picked, is your fast paced, hands in their face type of class, able to chain attacks in quick succession and build up your immobilization, which is this game's poise system, allowing for critical hit follow ups. And lastly, we have the Alchemist. A class capable of inflicting various status effects to automatons, such as fire, electricity, and frost. Ultimately, the class you pick doesn't matter too much as you can change into any weapon type and stat you want. Just be aware that you won't be able to respec once you commit to this change. My advice would be to pick the class you want, spec towards the main stats shown, and add a few points to others if need be. I'm quite shocked that the game doesn't have a respec option, but I guess it's their way of saying to play the game multiple times and try different things. On top of having weapon affinities, gear or armor pieces can be found by either exploring or buying it in the game's boutique slash shop, each providing some subtle bonuses. In Steel Rising, much like Elden Ring, it's more of a dress to impress sort of game as there aren't any set bonuses or upgrades you can do to them, so wear whatever you like. 
The innovations I'm talking about comes from the rapid cooling and module systems. Rapid cooling lets you cool down your stamina during battle, essentially letting you restore your stamina at the press of a button, much like an active or quick reload sequence in Gears of War for instance. I love this mechanic because it incentivizes aggression, something that spiders took notes from Bloodborne and the more you play, the more you soon realize how great this is. The catch is that you'll catch a bit of frost buildup and if you use it two times, shortly after one another, you'll be frozen for a few seconds, allowing you to take an easy hit. Thankfully, the module system can help fix that if you're suffering from this too often, which lets you slot up to four different modules, each providing a bonus. There's also different grade or leveled modules going from one to three and the slots can be upgraded with keys to allow for higher module usage. There's a few ridiculous ones in there that can make you overpowered, and one such module I found heavily reduced my endurance, but at the cost of being able to jump and dodge infinitely. Basically, free iframes and navigation, and working alongside the rapid cooling system creates this easy, somewhat carefree experience. It did, however, bug out on me multiple times, and it kept draining my stamina with it equipped, so I just got rid of it. Other cool modules include increasing your physical damage, resistances, and immobilization or poise rate, and they add huge boosts to your character. During the first few hours of the game, you'll get an option to travel between a few areas, and you'll run into some areas where you're locked out and can't access. This is because of the game's mobility tools, which you get from defeating each of the bosses in these three areas. You get a grappling hook, a ram that lets you slam these green locked walls or doors, and an aerial dash that lets you traverse a greater distance. These add a lot to the game's level design and makes exploring fun, providing shortcuts, secret areas, and things to find. Anima Essence or your souls is what you use to level and buy items from the boutique, and I like that the essence changes color when you have enough to level up. I thought that was pretty cool. Vestals are your bonfires, and the carriage is your secondary use of bonfires, mostly used for fast traveling between the areas and writing corresponding letters to NPCs for quests. You've got your oil barrette, or oil beretta as I called it, for your main source of healing, grenade and healing consumables, as well as a compass which I thought was interesting, giving you a vague waypoint of where to go. I say vague because the game doesn't provide you with directions or arrows like some sort of GPS, so you gotta find your way to get to these areas, but it's good in that it provides a sense of direction in the event that you get lost, which is nice. One cool feature that no other Souls-like game has is the assist mode, which lets you fine-tune the game's difficulty the way you want, from anima essence not being lost upon death, to quicker stamina regeneration and damage reduction. While I chose to play with the game's normal difficulty, Steel Rising could serve as a great starting point for those who are new to the Souls-like genre, though I'd argue that the assist mode isn't required, which I'll touch on later. From an art design standpoint, Steel Rising looks great. When I first saw the trailers and gameplay, I thought to myself, Bloodborne, but in an alternate universe with robots, and for the most part, it pretty much is, but with that Paris flair that I can't understate. I think the game looks great and depicts 1700 Paris really well, from the architecture to the clothing and even the characters themselves, basing off of real life characters from that time period. Maximilian Robespierre, Jack Snecker, and Alessandro Cagliostro. Doing some research after finishing the game, I saw that Louis XVI, the last king of France before the fall of the French monarch was executed by guillotine, and he pretty much died the same way in the game too, alongside giving a short speech of course, being an alternate universe and all, since it's a result of his thirst for immortality and power with these automatons. The game looked pretty good for the most part, with great use of lighting and scenery to create a grim Paris that's really been chipped down to pieces as a result of the bloodthirsty robots. From a game design standpoint, it's also really good. Plenty of vessels around each area for checkpoints and safe spots, shortcuts for easier backtracking and navigation, and an emphasis on verticality thanks to the mobility tools makes Steel Rising a blast to move around. Even if at times I was seemingly getting lost when it came to chasing those final echoes and doing side quests. This may be a personal issue for me, but I was struggling to figure out where to go at times, even with the compass active. I think this may be because of a lack of fast travel between the vessels, which, if they added that to the game, would have made for easier traveling and a better time getting the side quests done, and possibly also due to areas or places looking the same, so 
it was a bit hard to distinguish one place from another. The boss designs were also a standout for me, but on an art level, I mean, look at some of these bosses. My favourite boss would have to be the Iron Queen and Centaur. They just look so cool and intricate enough that I wanted to learn how these were built. From a technical level though, not so much. More on that later. The OST and sound effects of Steel Rising are serviceable, nothing special or crazy, with a few exceptions. The main menu or main theme music is really good, especially when you get to the Iron Queen, which gives us a replay but also a deeper meaning to the song overall, evoking that feeling of sadness and fighting for something. Won't dive too deep into that spoiler territory, but it's great. The vocals add a ton to this as well. Weapons sound okay. I kind of liked how when Aegis is walking or running around, you hear those robotic or mechanical footsteps instead of high heels, since she's wearing high heels. And that sound effect whenever Aegis is running out of stamina, alongside her battery overheating is both visually and sonically cool. I also loved the Basti ambient soundtrack when you're not in combat. I wish the soundtrack had more of that ominous and dark sound to it. Even with patches and fixes, this game's performance is atrocious. One, you need to use an upscaler or else your game will perform immensely worse, which I did a quick test when I first started the game, and yeah, similar to Remnant 2, this game relies on DLSS big time for the FPS. I didn't notice anything too bad with it on and the sharpening was good, so it wasn't too blurry. Second, the FPS is so inconsistent across all areas of the game. One time you're at 90 FPS, the next you're down to 67 as an example. It kept fluctuating and never remained the same. I tried capping the frame rate to 120 and lowering some essential settings like shadows, which I do with every game I play, but it was still fluctuating all over the place. You should be able to run the game fine since I was able to maintain a at least over 60 FPS pretty much the whole way through, it barely dipped below 60. But this is something you should be aware of as it can result in a pretty bad experience all around. Outside of this, I didn't experience a single crash but encountered a few bugs, most notably collision ones where my character just wouldn't go past something, primarily being some sort of invisible wall or object. While the bosses may look great in hindsight and have pretty good mechanics, they kind of lack in power and satisfaction. This is primarily due to a few things. Bosses simply being too easy, or some bosses simply being too easy, and grenades. Grenades in this game are a godsend, and even though I could have just ditched these and fought the bosses normally, it's a mechanic at the end of the day, and if it means using it instead of having hundreds of grenades in my inventory waiting for me to throw them, I'm going to use it. Godsend to the point of being overpowered. Explosive grenades can soft stun enemies, depending on how much damage you deal to them. Frost grenades freeze enemies for a period of time, making them susceptible to attacks. Formination grenades increases the damage you deal to enemies, and petrification grenades build immobilization faster, resulting in infinite stuns if you have enough of them. The first few bosses I fought without grenades since I was limited, but once I had enough, I went to town and popped off. On top of fighting these, you can also buy these at the shop which you'll get to a point where you have nothing to spend your essence on or you're too high level, so you'll most likely just spend these on grenades and consumables. That's what I did, and while it's fun, it really ruined the balance of the game, which leads me to my next problem. The game was easy. Way too easy. I counted my deaths for this playthrough, and I died a total of 8 times out of 14 hours. The balance in this game is piss bad in that a lot of things are just straight broken, and even though it's nice to be able to gear up and just rinse a boss, trust me, I know that feeling too much from FromSoft games. It never felt like it was broken or balanced compared to this game, even if I'm using a strong weapon. I don't think I died to a single boss the entire time, all of my deaths resulting from normal enemies. Lack of enemy variety also correlates with this because by the time you get to the mid game, you've seen it all. They just change the enemies to have different variants and moves. I think another balance pass or two would have gone a long way to bring the game to a better state where it'd be a lot harder. There's this item called the Ordinary Health File that grants health regeneration for 20 seconds and is fairly cheap to get. I use this more than I use the Oil Barrette and that's a problem because they should be treated more like side or rare consumables rather than something common. Not to mention you, get it, you can get it for like 100 souls. Spending essence to get souls which grants you more essence is an interesting game design choice in a way that 
I just find it pointless to have something like that in there in the first place. Exploring the world of Steel Rising felt disappointing, as majority of the time, I'd always be getting souls and the occasional grenades, but outside of some chests to find gear pieces and weapons, there wasn't really anything special about it. I wish gear could also be found as floor drops instead of chests. Steel Rising is one of those good 7 out of 10 games, where it's fun to play through and have a blast, despite the flaws. Good for longtime Souls-like players, great for new Souls-like players, although I think Dark Souls 1 is a better choice for a starter than this one since it gives you the proper balance of a Souls game, and it's fun to be fighting robots for a change other than humans and creatures. The story is a nice bonus too, and the new game plus mode is an option for those who want to run it back, with higher soul yield and a quicker way to make Aegis the most advanced automaton to ever exist. I really like this game, and I think you should give it a go for what it's worth, despite the flaws and the negatives and, and some things that may be hit or miss. It's still a really, really good game. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. If I missed anything, comment down below. As always, I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.